Let's see, Bad Lieutenant. Bad Lieutenant is a, it's a movie. It came out in 1996, I believe. This star is Harvey Keitel. Uh, it was directed by Abel Ferreira. Um, <clears throat> if you're not familiar with his work, uh, I'm trying to think of something that he might have done that you guys would be familiar with. Uh, he did the Body Snatchers movie. It came out in like 90 or 93 or something. It had Jeff Goldblum in it. That might be, he's not a mainstream actor. Uh, our director, I mean, he, his movies aren't that well known. I mean, if you're a film buff, you know who he is. But uh, the only one that most people that know of him but don't know that it's his movie that he directed is called King of New York. It stars Christopher Walken. It's just an iconic gangster movie. We're not talking about that, though. We're talking about Bad Lieutenant, which is a movie, like I said, starring Harvey Keitel. Uh, came out in 1996. And, and of all the movies I've seen <clears throat> in my whole life, I've never seen such a, a low-down, just horrible person as Harvey Keitel's character in this movie. Like, he doesn't even have a name. They, they don't even ever have a name for him. They credit him as the bad lieutenant, pretty much, lieutenant. He's a cop is what it is. The plot of the movie is he's a cop, but uh, he's, he's got demons. He's got all types of shit. Just, he's a gambler. You think, like, all right, you, you think a typical dirty cop movie, you're like, okay, he probably sells drugs, does this and that. All right, he does everything in any movie, but he's smoking crack, uh, he's shooting up heroin, he's fucking hookers, sluts, he's doing all types of stuff. Uh, but the whole movie, there's really not, I'm not going to say there's no plot to this movie. I mean, if, you, if you're if you following my reviews, I kind of like movies that don't have, like, a, a plot, like, oh, this guy's trying to get this girl, but I don't like that type of shit. I like just real stuff, you know, like situations. <clears throat> and uh, with this movie, like, uh, the main, I guess the ongoing plot you could say is what sets it up is he's such a bad guy, and he does not see any type of retribution in his future whatsoever. He, there's nothing that he can do to redeem himself for all the bad things he's done. And I'll get into some of the bad things he, he does. But uh, what happens is these two junkies, they, they break into a church, and they, they pretty much vandalize all that. They spray paint the crosses, this horrible stuff, but they also rape a nun, and I think they even shove a crucifix inside of her. They, yeah, they rape her and all that, and uh, he hears about that case because he hears one of his friends is covering it, da-da-da, and uh, he just, something clicks in his head, and he's like, that, that's my chance. I can, if I, if I can get these, these, these killers or whatever, these rapists, that, that'd be my redemption, you know, because they raped a nun. Obviously, the Lord would be, you know, in favor of me. But after he get, he talks to that nun, and it's a really good scene. That nun, she is just, like, diehard, devoted to, to her beliefs, and she doesn't want anything to happen to those two guys that, that raped her. You know, she says God will sort them out when it's their time. And most people would be like, nah, no, nah, we're going to get them. But the bad lieutenant, you know, being the flawed character he is, he's oh, okay, yeah, I'm still going to find them. But I'm going to make up my own choice. I, I know that the nun doesn't want them, you know, to be punished by us. They, she wants the Lord to do it. But I'm still going to find them because I'm a cop. And he still has a little bit of sense in him. But so the whole movie, it's not like he's driving around trying to find these people. He ends up just stumbling across them in a crack house at the end of the movie. But what happens from that point to the end is what sets the movie off. Uh, let me try to think of a, a scene. There's a scene. All right, this is why he. This this scene right here portrays why he's just a low down, horrible person. All right, there's these two girls. They're uh, they're coming home. They're driving home on the highway, and uh, he pulls them over. He just pulls them over for something. I bust his tail. I, it's it's pretty much bullshit for a reason. They're pretty girls too. I think even one might be even Julie Lewis, really young. I think it might be. I have to double check on that. But anyways, he pulls them over, and uh, he just. He goes up to the, the, the car, the window, and uh, he's playing all cool, you know, and uh, he knows that they're high on, on drugs and whatever, and he knows that that's their parents' car, and he, he pretty much knows, because he's a cop, he has that wit, you know, he can pick up on things, he knows that they, they borrowed it without him asking all that. He distinguishes that just from a couple minutes of conversation, but in return, to get them out of it, he makes the one, the one girl in the passenger seat, he... Uh, has her bend over and pour a blouse up so you can just see her ass. And then the other one, I think he, he has her open her mouth or he has her do something really lewd with her face and to make it and he just simulates he's looking at them and outside the car he just jerks off. He's just jerking off right there on the highway, looking at them girls, making them do these lewd acts right in their car, right on the highway, after he just pulled them over and that scene right there, that just he's that's just hard that's horrible. Like man, that's just a horrible thing to do to someone. He's just really a low down person. And that's what makes the movie so good is I've never seen a character so well developed. And Harvey Keitel should have got 
at least won some type of award. I'm, I know he got nominated, but it wasn't like the Academies or nothing like that. But hey, he should have, because even though he portrayed a, a horrible person, he did a great job with that. That scene, uh, there's another scene where he goes to, uh, I, I assume she's one of his prostitutes, just, just one of his, it's a place where he goes to shoot heroin up pretty much. And uh, he goes over there and he gets all heroin out with this girl and this and that. And it's just like a montage of just him just doing crazy shit. And before you know it, he's just like, like this this whole scene right here just sums up his whole life pretty much. Is he's naked. Uh, got his arms up like he's Jesus Christ, like on the cross, and he's just, he's so, he's so messed up that he's just talking gibberish, just, just, just gibberish, just, just making weird noises, he's just so out of his mind, that's the scene, is Harvey Keitel just pretty much losing his mind right there, so high out of his mind and drunk and everything, and it's just, it's just a crazy scene to see, like, like, it really took some balls to get naked and just act like you're on dope like that just for a role, but it is, he really did a good job, but, uh, the whole movie, though, it's just, it's so realistic, like, the way that Abel Ferrer shot the movie, too, because he uses a lot of tracking shots in that. And what a tracking shot is, is, like, uh, you got a character walking out of a building, and the camera is constantly behind him. So it's like you're almost, you're that person. It's almost like playing a third-person shooter video game is what a tracking camera is. And it just follows them as they go throughout what they do. And there's a really good scene where he goes to one of his, because what he does, well, another thing he does is he'll take drugs like normal cop, or normal dirty cops would do. He takes drugs and drug money and gives them to dealers, and they'll sell it in return for him. He also takes some of the product, too, because he's addicted to all that. But uh, <clears throat> there's a scene where he goes to his drug dealer's place. And uh, gets gets some money from him, and the the cameras, it's a tracking shot, it tracks him all the way, all the way pretty much down the the crack house apartment into the the dark alley, and the whole time you you just waiting for someone to just come out and just shoot him or stab him or something. You just, that tension is building is so so well done, but nothing ever happens though. He just gets to his car, and this the cinematography is just I, I just love it, and the whole movie itself just looks gritty, gritty, grainy. It's almost like they took like gravel from the street itself and just wiped it over the film and just made it just look real and just urban and gritty and raw it just looks so cool but uh yeah the whole movie it's just a portrait of a, a horrible person i haven't figured if i'm i've been doing a lot of these reviews i haven't been spoiling the endings i'm not gonna start doing it yet until i may i haven't been mind up if i'm gonna want to do that just in case you know someone watches this and they don't want to see the end but i really want to talk about the end of all these movies i talk about but i'll hold off but yeah, watch The Bad Lieutenant if you get a chance. It's really rare and hard to find. I got lucky and found a copy of it. And my friend actually got it for me and all that. But yeah, it's really, it's rare. I'm not, I don't think it's out of print, but it's damn near like out of print. But, they, well, don't get confused though because they made a remake. Now here's another thing, I'm briefly touching this. They made a remake, came out a couple years ago, starred Nicolas Cage. It's called Bad Lieutenant. It was directed by Werner Herzog. Or Werner Herzog, I can't say it German-wise. But uh, the same guy that did Rescue Dawn and some other cool movies. But uh, he's a good director. But but it's a, all right, it's not technically a remake because Werner Herzog said, oh, I've never seen Abel Ferreira's movie. I didn't like the way he did this. He said he'd never seen the original Bad Lieutenant. Uh, he doesn't even know who Abel Ferreira is. Da, da, da. I didn't like that. Okay, how can you tell some? How can you publicly admit you've never seen his movie, but your movie is along the same lines and it's the same title? That's That doesn't make sense at all. No, yeah, people think the same things, but you're not thinking exactly what Abel Ferrer is. But that he made it, it's along the same lines as, as the original. It's got more big names, I guess. Like, it's got Val Kilmer and Exhibit. And just, it's like, it's, it's a good movie, though. It's equally, it's not dirtier, but it's equally dirty. It, it has its fair share of parts, but, like, there's no scene that rivals, like, that, that, that masturbation scene when he pulls those girls over or just any scene. There's, there's nothing in the new one that can top the old one, but it is a good movie. But I recommend checking out the 1996 one starring Harvey, Harvey Keitel before going into the Nicolas Cage one. But that's up to you.